All right, guys, welcome back to level two of uh, how to create your own kick drum samples inside of Contact. Uh, level one, we kind of just discussed how to create a basic, simple uh, Contact sample pack. Um, you know, definitely usable for those of you guys who are doing more pop, EDM, dubstep, hip hop kind of stuff, um, where you're able to use the same kick drum sample over and over and over again, and you want that same consistency. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a drum sample pack where it's going to be a little bit more complex and it's gonna be more for acoustic drums. Uh, the thing, the reason why we can't use the same kick drum sample over and over again with acoustic instruments is because uh, it'll sound fake. It'll have a machine gun kind of feel to it. Uh, it won't sound natural. So what we end up doing differently off the bat is uh, we take different samples at the recording process of the drums five or six times, however many you want to do. Um, and though the samples themselves sound almost identical because they're six independently recorded samples, they're gonna sound a little bit different from one another. So to, to have a better idea of what I'm talking about, I'd rather show you guys. So um, here on my desktop, navigated from my metal example drums to this uh, kick drum kit that I got online. So uh, you can visit uh, the metalkickdrum.com and they have a bunch of free metal kick drums that you can use. Went to the wave folders and that's where we're at right now. So let's take a quick listen to this. So as you can see, uh, as I was going up and down through these different samples, it was playing through them and you could probably hear the slight different variations that are going on. And that's the kind of stuff that we want when we're um, when we're working with this kind of stuff. We want to be able to have uh, those slight different variations that way those kick drums sound real. So uh, now that we have these, let's go over here and double click to create a new instrument. Let's call this metal kick example, right? Or name it whatever you want. If you guys already have your own samples, you know what you want to do with them, right? Click this toolbar again. And the first thing that we're going to do, which is going to be different from the other video that I showed you, is you're going to hit this group editor, okay? Now, there's a total of six samples. We're going to create a total of six. So we have one already here off the bat. One, two, three, four, five. So now we have a total of six, okay? Double click these. Let's label these. Call it kick one, uh, kick two, or let's make it easier. We'll just do this K3. K4, K5, and K6. And labeling these are not really so important. They're just more for um, organizational purposes, right? So, and just so that way we know what we're doing and what we're working with. The next thing we wanna do is uh, hit this edit all groups, take that off. And then the next thing we wanna do is go to, where is it? Uh, do, 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 do. Saw it here. Yeah, give me one second, guys. I'm looking for it. Selected. I'm looking for it. Select by me to create a new group. Oh, I think I have to actually add a sample in first. So give me one second. Oh, no, here it is. So you're going to click MIDI, uh, map uh, editor, mapping editor, and click select group, uh, selected groups only. Okay. And um, I'll, I'll explain why this is going to be important. So let's go back to our samples here. And what we're gonna do is this. We're going to load that sample into C1 like we did the other one, right? I'm gonna drop it in here, okay? Now, that's in group one. Now, if I go to group two, you're gonna see that it's empty. So now I can kind of easily explain this. Essentially what it is, each group, whatever you put on it, you can put something different than the next group, right? Uh, so what we're gonna do is in each one of the groups put uh, one of the different samples in there. So on kick one, C1, we put a, a sample. Now on kick two, on C1, we're also gonna do the same thing, right? Oh, that's on C sharp. There we go. Let's do this with K3. K4. And K5, back finder. And then lastly, K6. I'm gonna just use this from now. This should be a little bit easier. All right, so that's all there, right? So 
Now the thing is, is that we want this to cycle through it. If you can see right now, when I click this button, it's only playing K6. And we don't want that. What we want it to do, it's actually playing all the samples. So what we want to do is deselect this. And let me see, still playing them. So what we want to do is go to group start options, go to group starts and go to cycle random. And now what this should be doing is, nope, where is it? There we go. So you want to hit it, edit all groups and then go to group start and hit random. And what this is going to do now, and you can hear that it got quieter, it's going to play each individual sample uh, separately, but go through them randomly. So as you can see here, they're highlighted in different colors and it's playing randomly. Right, so that's close to what we want. Now there's a couple other things that we have to go ahead and set up here. We're gonna go ahead and uh, do this again, the edit all groups. We're gonna close the map editor. We're gonna go down here to volume, is it? Let me see here. Yeah, okay. So. This is the other thing. So the reason why you want the edit all groups is on the first group, it automatically has the volume at zero. But if I click here, it's gonna be negative six. We're gonna double click that and change that back to zero. So that way it's not playing different samples at different volumes. Now all of them should be affected. So now we can turn off edit all groups. Actually, let's turn it back on. Uh, I know I keep changing my mind here, guys. <laughs> so let's go here. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. All right, so the first one on here, what you're gonna wanna do is uh, go lay on the bottom on group one, right click and hit, uh, where is it? Should be a delete, there we go, delete. So now it's gonna get rid of that. Now, if you remember that before, that was uh, essentially controlling when the start and stop of that sample would play. So if I hit this and I let go quick, it's gonna automatically get rid of that. So what we need to do is actually add it back in. But when we do it, make sure that all groups are selected. So what we do is it's gonna set it for all the groups. So velocity, add modulator. And then, so yeah, at right here under group editor, you wanna to go to add modulator and you wanna to go to envelopes, hit this one here, go back down to the bottom. And the same thing as before, we're gonna go ahead and change the whole decay, sustain, and release. And now when we hit it, it's going to do what we want it to do. All right. So let's go ahead. Diesel, or we'll leave that on. We'll go ahead and close this. And now let's hit the wrench. And now let's take a listen to our MIDI track. So as you can hear, it has more of that of variations. It would sound a little bit more realistic. So, uh, now you would do essentially the same thing for the snare as well as you would create one of these again and label it metal snare uh, example and we're gonna do the same thing let's go over to group editor right create some of these guys here let's do just four for now to make this tutorial go by a little bit faster Click this, selected groups only. We'll turn this off. Let's go over here and let's go back to where those snail, snare samples are. So let's take a listen to what we got. Um, actually, you know what? This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make it into part three because this actually gives me a very uh, good example to show you what you need to do with these particular ones. Uh, I'll explain in video three so you guys can go ahead and meet me there if you like this video, do me a favor, hit like, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys soon.